County Attorney. We have 20 items included today from the commission meeting on January the 10th. Any questions from any of the items there? Second. I will move to second. I won't to say aye. Aye. Uh, next, we have the sheriff. Has a resolution for the sheriff for, uh, for office for a sworn personnel cost of living adjustment. Create a public safety pay scale and sworn personnel within the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I, I think we have the sheriff, uh, Mr. Dyer, Mr. Dulles, uh, John Henry and I. Went over his budget. I uh, wanted to assure him that, that, that things were good. Uh, the sheriff is supporting this uh, budget adjustment, and I think he's going to be at the meeting on, uh, on Thursday. We want to make sure that, uh, that the sheriff understands that, that that is in his budget because he has expressed some concerns. Uh, I think he's broken the old time pay and, and several other different items. So uh, we want the sheriff to understand and, and realize that, uh, that the budget is uh, sound right now. And that these items really, uh, he needs to conduct his business as usual. So, Chair, entertain a motion on that? I have a question, Mr. Chief. So I want to make sure what we are approving is that 5% cost of living adjustment that we talked about back in December. Is that what this specific item is? That is correct. All right. And so as I understand it, and if someone can help assist in this regard, I appreciate it, is that uh, the previous chair, um, had a lot of overtime pay that had decreased the overall budget severely. Uh, is there any kind of um, way that if we can't make up the difference, because I know that outside of the budget, we can't tell the sheriff what to do, but what, what do we do to help try to make sure that this department remains at high level, if not better than where it has previously been? I'm talking about Budget-wise, well, the Jefferson County Commission has <coughs> approved the sheriff's budget, mm -hmm. and those monies have begun to be expended for this fiscal year. And uh, through the meeting that uh, John Henry, Ellis, <coughs> and Commissioner Knight, and myself had, we we feel that the budget is is still in good shape, and that there's no reason or any provisions that we would need to make any drastic changes. So the purpose of what I'm asking, Mr. Chair, is because based upon my understanding, it's going to restrict the new sheriff on some levels just because, uh, as I understand it, there was a large amount of money <coughs> that from the budget passing to December uh, was spent. And so that's the reason why I'm asking, for example, if the new sheriff had new hires or would like to set certain salaries at, at, at a particular amount, it probably wouldn't be uh, feasible at this point because of the fact that there was a, a good bit of money that was spent. Unless someone, if, if I'm inaccurate with what I've, I've been told, then please correct me. Because what I don't want to do is to put the department at a disadvantage. And the reason being is because I know in these uh, rural and some urban areas, we, we're going to really depend on that metro area crime center in, in order to assist where there's a shortfall of officers or deputies. And that's why I'm asking, because I, I want to see them effectively engaged in, in those uh, various communities, such as a Fairfield and some others, that they need police protection. That Again. John Henry and Mr. Tellers and Mr. Knight, we, we reviewed the sheriff's budget. Uh, there are monies that are available to, to work through the remainder of this year. And uh, we're, 
comfortable that uh, if any changes need to be made, we make them at the appropriate time. So then, Mr. Uh, Chairman, with that being stated, I would fully support what we have before us, but I'd love to hear from the sheriff by our next meeting. The, the sheriff is scheduled to be at our court uh, Thursday commission. Yeah. But I'm saying, well, we can have him a part of the committee meeting uh, so that I appreciate you all having the meeting you had, but I, I want to hear some things on the record from the sheriff in terms of his position on these items. Uh, that anything related to the sheriff's department, I want him to be held accountable uh, to the services that we need and that only the sheriff's department can provide. But I also want to get his thoughts in, uh, on the record in terms of how he feels about these folks. Yeah, of course. <coughs> uh, is there any way you can tell us how much we spend? Uh, I can tell you what to do. Why don't <coughs> Uh, get over the sheriff's budget. He's Mr. Knight. Yeah, and, yeah, and it looks like we were 5.6 million over the budget for the 2018. No, 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 no. no. I mean, that's it, just it, commissioner. Yeah. If you if you remember, we talked about those were carryovers from the previous year. The monies that had been uh, uh, appropriated but not yet expended. Perhaps John Henry would. Okay. Uh, or Daryl, either one of them could uh, address that. I believe you had that question in the meeting yeah. also. Yes, sir. So what you have is, I don't have the, the budget in front of me, but um, if you look at last year's uh, budget for the sheriff, where we started out was initially at uh, 61 million, and then with carryovers and encumbrances, we had a revised budget of 65 million. We ended the year with a budget of 70 million. 70 million is the result of us as we did a new mechanism for the allocation of employees and time. We only funded a portion of the, uh, of the county, not just including the sheriff, of the county's overall um, position. We tried it as a percentage. And then in doing that, we did recognize throughout the year we would have to make an adjustment. So we ended the year with a budget of 70, 70 million in full anticipation that that's where we would be. This year, the sheriff's budget is roughly um, about 68, uh, I think 68 point, uh, I think 68 million, um, 68. about 68 and a half million. And that was a result of conversations in reference to the sheriff and the commission wanting to keep the number within a certain level so that's why the amendment you see in front of us um, <coughs> begins in six months versus the full year. If it began the full year, then you would have a budget that was closer to the 70 million plus mark, if that's all. There was money appropriated for, for the sheriff's pay raise beginning in April on April 1. Correct. And everything, the, the, the funded how many vacant positions? I believe right now it's 54. 54 vacant, 54 vacant positions were fully funded in the budget. Last year they were not fully funded. Uh, uh, this year in 2019 they're fully funded. So you're talking, Yes, sir. So I'm talking about the overtime that was spent between the election. Well, there, there will, the overtime, I'm not sure that any additional overtime uh, that was not, the, the sheriff always, no matter who's the sheriff, is going to have about three and a half million dollars worth of overtime per year based on the different things that, that, that they do. Uh, John Henry, am I correct when I say that? That's, that's about right, that's about, about average. average. Yeah, I'm that's been the average. Been. I think so far we spent roughly over 1.3, million. Yeah. So a little bit, we spent more than half since September. Is that September. Okay. And, and it's not beginning of the year one, one and a half. Also, oh, there's a lot of vacancies in the fall. So right. because of the vacancy creates the overtime that's needed uh, to make up. HR's been, Sheriff's office, they've been bringing <coughs> on new uh, sheriff's deputies uh, consistently. Right. And as he becomes more staff, the overtime will go down. 
But right now you've had you've had ball games and good fall of the year. And uh, there's there's certain things and this has been the past pattern in practice and it's, there's nothing unusual that, that has gone on and uh, it's it's the same thing that we we see each year. Wasn't that a part of the the um, uh, budget hearings as well? That conversation that that, that uh, over time would be eventually used towards getting full time folks in place. Correct. Is that is that correct? No, we, so. that <clears throat> we knew that the first quarter of this year would be a heavy overtime with the elections and transferring over to the new school resource officers, and now. We're also going to be getting some reimbursement back from the Board of Education for that overtime that we've never gotten before. So there's a revenue account been established by John Henry that that money goes into to offset that to help cover that cost. This is the first fiscal year we've ever been able to do that. So it's fluid. Do we have a projection on that there? The um, BOE? Yes, about <coughs> 1.6 million. Okay. The additional revenue coming in. So, so Mr. President, here, here's the question that I, I want to ask of you, uh, Mr. Henry. <coughs> what Commissioner Tyson and I are gathering or uh, getting to is are we saying that this is usual pattern that between October and December, or if you want to say October to January, that if you have Three million plus. Tell me what it is again. Three, three and a half. Say about three, three and a half. Million. Between three and three point five million dollars. Okay, is that typical, or is that um, a pattern that is normal? That by in three months, basically ninety days, a little bit over, that you've already spent close to half, if not more than half, of your budget for overtime. Uh, in three months now. Yeah, that's a good that's a uh, good question, Commissioner. I would have to relate that to to Daryl because what we set here is we set the sheriff's overall budget, mm -hmm. and then once we set that overall number, how the sheriff manages within that number, um, we don't actually you know we don't actually see. But you know what we try to look at in reference to is just to make sure that we are heading down a path to where we don't expend more than what was totally allocated by the commission. So anytime we see something that does cause concern, you know, we'll have a conversation with Daryl and or someone on the sheriff's team in reference to what that would look like. Um, so if there is a question or concern in reference to overtime, then yes, it would be either if overtime is high, higher than what it's normally, then that money would have to be used from somewhere else in the budget. So then, then, then I would have a subsequent question. Is that what occurred from what from what has happened to this budget? I'm trying not to put words in your mouth, but I want to make sure that first, is this normal activity? And it seems really abnormal because that wouldn't be real prudent if you spend almost half, if not more than half of your budget in three months that you have to deal with for a fiscal year. That doesn't make sense to me, mathematically. But the other portion to that would be, you know, so it seems like it puts this new sheriff at a disadvantage because you don't have the, the and, it, and at some point this is gonna become problematic unless there's some sort of outside dollars that's going to come back to that budget. I mean, help me along because I, I don't want to pretend I know when I don't. I just know that it doesn't make <coughs> mathematical sense to me. Commissioner, well, first quarter of the budget is always high for high school football games and all that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. this year, unlike years past, they're reimbursing for that. Mm -hmm. Or at least 50% of it for the school board. But is that normal behavior in the budget for at this point? In three months, you've already spent over half of your overtime pay. Yes, it's fairly normal on the first quarter, especially with an election year. Because mm -hmm. you had all the overtime that the deputies had to work during the election, and all the overtime work for high school football from August all the way through until football season was over. Did you hit the Christmas parades? 
and then it would be a copy of how much was spent in the previous years up to now. Sure, sure. And then when we, when we met with uh, the sheriff and his team earlier this week, we provided them a, uh, a detail of what was budgeted last year and then where we are this year and uh, his, um, uh, I don't know what they call it, uh, Mr. Woods um, that's working with the sheriff is going to go over that in detail. He said if you have any questions, he, he, he let us know. But I think he was going to serve the back with us in reference to after they, did, after they were able to do their analysis. But we can definitely put that information together as soon as we Well, did the sheriff at all uh, indicate that there was some sort of uh, uh, discomfort with this budget as it stands right now in order for him to be able to operate or they're in the process of just assessing where they are and then they'll get back with us? Is that where we are? Yeah, he said that they would take the data and then look at it and analyze it. If he had any questions, he'd let us know. Because I'm just thinking that with, with all of the crime that is, is happening within these various cities that the county hopefully will be assisting if they're not currently assisting, that's just troublesome that, that you've already spent what you did in, in 90 days plus and, and it's more than half of your overtime budget. So what happens, we have some, some big need uh, you know, whether, whether it be uh, bridge closings or whatever, leading up to what we're dealing with now with the interstate now dot and all that, you know, where is he going to get the money from? Because once the budget is passed, that's it. Am I correct? I mean, there's no additional dollars that we can approve to be appropriated to the sheriff's department. Am I right? Not at this time. I think what we said was that if there, if at some point in the future we see a need, then you know, the commission. Um, um, can look at probably making an adjustment. And he doesn't think that this is going to um, prohibit him from being able to do any new hires or any of that within that department? He With the budget being what it is? He didn't say it. I hate to speak for him, but he didn't. Agree. And see, that's the reason why I want to hear from he him. Been, me, 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 yeah, I would have. Well, that, um, <clears throat> you cannot, you could not have been to because, because it, 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 the commissioner is there, there was no form. Now, if, 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 if you two want to meet with the sheriff separately or uh, meet with John Henry, that, I think that would be perfectly appropriate. But we have the figures and the sheriff has figures and, and the, the key thing is, is that the sheriff's budget is still in good shape. Mr. President, it's not that we are we are in a learning stage. Understand. And I want to know what's going on. I don't want to be on the end of the deal and I don't comprehend everything that y'all, I want to be at the same level to where I can understand everything. So I'll be happy to sit is. down and meet with you and meet with you I'll and meet with, the with, with John Henry. Now, in all due respect to the sheriff, uh, John Henry uh, would be more knowledgeable as far as to the, the finances, especially right now, uh, and, and the, the amount of money that's been expended, and, and all the figures are right here. And any either of you can pick those up off of units uh, data, and you can see have to see how that money is expended and how it, how it goes out with any department within the county, not just the sheriff's department. If you want to see how roads are spending their money, you can go to Munich and, and, and determine that. So we do have uh, real-time uh, figures, thanks to John Henry and, and, our, and our finance department. I want to commend them on the ability to do that. So, Mr. President, and with all due respect, um, I don't speak for Commissioner Tyson, but I think we speak in one accord in this regard that uh, I'd like for us to have the sheriff here on the agenda for our next meeting. I'm, I'm just real uncomfortable with doing anything with his budget. And he's also at a learning curve. You have three new commissioners who are also learning. And, you know, if, if I mean, I respect uh, Mr. Henry's um, wealth of knowledge, otherwise he wouldn't be here. But what I'd like to do is to have uh, the sheriff to, to come before us in this setting and we talk about his specific budget 
because from what where I'm hearing, uh, they even they're at a, at a at a learning disadvantage, and because they are, they they've got to continue to try to map through this budget the way we are, and I'm still concerned about this overtime, and and I know you all are saying that that's a normal <coughs> pattern, but I don't think that the previous share would have been around this place for 15 years or greater and spend overtime in three months. That's over 50% of his overtime budget. And it just, that's just ludicrous to me. So if I'm missing something, I don't want to appear as though I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, saying anything against anyone or anybody. I just want this share uh, and I know Commissioner Ty, all of us wanted him to do well and do that department to do well. But I'm concerned about this, this money. And I know you and I, Commissioner uh, Ammons, uh, briefly kind of talked about it when you told me that you were concerned about all this overtime. And, and I'm saying, okay, if half of it is gone, then if that has to affect that budget adversely some kind of way. And, and I, that's why I'm saying, Mr. President, being that I don't want Commissioner Tyson and I to have a separate discussion. I prefer for the chair to come here and all of us hearing one conversation about one budget, and then we can be able to govern ourselves accordingly at that point with that understanding. No, Henry, I want the chair to pay real fast here. Uh, that I'd have to look up. I don't know exactly what the table on that. Anyway, the, the three and a half million is, is, is normally uh, I think that if you, you don't want to put the sheriff at a disadvantage by bringing him on with the discuss figures that he's not going to yeah. But that's fine. I, 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 I will make that request to have him at the next committee meeting. Because of you. And, and we, will, we will address these at that time. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't stand you saying. So, what if Ms. Steele and John Henry share? Sure. Well, to get a full understanding. Get a full under you. You know, he may be satisfied now since we've had our meeting, and you're not aware of, of what, what we've got. Right. So, uh, Commissioner Knight, yes. did you get any type of uh, an uneasiness coming from the sheriff when he left that meeting? No, no, no. I think he was satisfied with the meeting, but I think that's when he got these, and so I think they haven't had time to digest them and go through them. And, and I can't remember if we, if he couldn't make it today or he chose to come. He Thursday. chose to come third. I think so. But we I mean, all I agree. Today. I mean, you know, today would have been a good day for him to be here to discuss this. I'm not sure if they had a conflict. And that's what I'm saying, respectfully, Mr. President. Uh, well, we, we can have a meeting and all that, but I, I, I think it, it needs to be in this meeting, particularly the committee meeting, and, and, and where this can be a work session for all of us who are trying to learn what this is about in addition to the sheriff learning. All four of us can be at a, at a learning disadvantage. Uh, because it's going to adversely, in my humble opinion, uh, adversely affect the Sheriff's Department. And what I also uh, am interested in in this upcoming budget is level funding for the department. Because again, uh, with some of the, the ask and request uh, that I know that some of us new people have, it's going to require additional uh, hirings and some other things. And, and so with that having said, that's that's why I'm real concerned about it, because they, they, they are very needed. And uh, so, Mr. President, uh, you know, Commissioner Tyson and myself and John Henry can meet, but I'm respectfully asking for it to come back before this committee, by the next committee meeting. And if the sheriff is uncomfortable with his own budget, that right there gives me heartburn, right there. I mean, just the fact if he's uncomfortable to talk about it, and we don't know anything about it, then why should we be voting on something even the sheriff is uncomfortable with? Would you like to motion to table this? Yes, please. Could I? Motion to table behind. this and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Everybody, we're going to table. And what are we tabling? 
Next up is Motorola radio leads. <coughs> Upgrading radios for the Sheriff's Department. This is an acknowledgement only this money was in the budget. It was appropriated and we're acknowledging <coughs> the expenditure to upgrade the radios. Okay. I you wouldn't say, I'll say aye. Aye. There's another item that I want to <coughs> add to the Sheriff's Department. It's the Department of Justice grant acceptance that there's going to be a little over $700,000 that, that the sheriff is receiving for body camps. This is money that was not expected. <coughs> so there's $700,000 of money right there that, that we've got that we're not expecting to upgrade these body camps. Um, we gave this information to the sheriff uh, at, our, at the meeting that we had, and he was very appreciative. So I would like to add that to, to that. Yeah. Yeah. Move and second. I'll say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, District 3, we have a board of foreman to the Jefferson County DHR board to reinforce Joel Brown. We have a community grant for the Birmingham Board of Education to Winona High School. This is Amendment 1. This is money that, Mr. Tyson, this is money that had already been expended. Um, and what they were doing was changing the purpose of the money. Uh, grant was originally limited to the purchase of a pitching machine has been expanded to allow funds to include additional softball equipment and uniforms for whatever high school. Money has already uh, been uh, uh, allocated from the previous year. Uh, also, community grant dollars, uh, park and recreation centers about twenty five hundred dollars to assist in improvement of their little ball field. Move to three. Second. Move second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, number one, Commissioner Bunn. Do what? You move the ball? Do we do one? On the red point for two. Do you have to do it? Do you have to do it? Okay. Commissioner Tyson. That concludes our report. Commissioner Tyson. tenants in our building's parking contracts. Um, so a few commission meetings back, we uh, increased the price of parking for the county, and so we subsequently responded by increasing the price of parking for our partners who are renting space in our building um, to match that cost that we increased in the county. Number six, agenda item number six, is to increase the grant amount. So we originally were awarded a grant um, that's overseen by Fellowship House for our opioid clinic in an approximate amount of about $621,000. That amount has increased now to $821,000. Um, so that's reflecting that increase uh, to fund that clinic. And number seven is just a BAA agreement um, for some software that we use to transmit health information data. So it was a contract that was already in place and this is a BAA um, to, to move, to migrate data in that contract. Turn the page, you have an A on oh. <laughs> the and, and also, this, you, you need a pen and ink. Your math's wrong on that. Yeah. Which, which number is that? Number eight. No. 224 minus 120 is going to be 104,000. We will correct that. Yes, sir. Three. 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 And number two and three uh, Commissioner Tyson, we, I will send you send you all an email on that one, but what it should reflect is uh, the amount of the original tenant space lease agreement plus the increase of the price for each of those parking spaces. Um, but I'll send you all an email to make sure that's very yeah. clear. <coughs> that's always good when you do this. That, that way, because that was one of my questions, what do they pay it now? Mm -hmm. What do they pay? What's it going to? We increased by $15 per, per spot, but I'll, I'll break it out to make sure it's very clear. On number six, this is not a new clinic, is it? No, sir. This was the opioid clinic we opened last February. Okay. 
And what about the non-fellowship sponsored patients? That's just under our guise of uh, care. So 100% of it um, is grant funded. So all the patients have to meet our criteria, um, our Jefferson County criteria. And so the whole 100% of the clinic, including the patients and the care, are funded under the grant. And I believe we fund 40% of the physician fee. Is that right? No, or, sir. So, fellowship so the physicians that we have perform multiple duties, right? And so what you may perform be talking about multiple, multiple duties. Okay. So what you may be referencing is our psychiatrist was our mental health psychiatrist before the opioid clinic. And so what we did was increase his time by 40 additional percent. Okay. to oversee the opioid clinic. So we were already paying him to provide mental health services. We opened the opioid clinic and added time. All right, now the uh, item seven is business agreement with half and half the associates. Yes, sir. And I don't see any cost. I mean, there's no contract in the back of it. You just said there's already a contract in place. What is this do? So this was our legacy EHR system that we had when we were a hospital. So it holds all of our old hospital related data. And so what we're doing right now is moving some of that information around. So that's why the contract was already in place, had already been previously paid for. But because we're having to mi migrate information, we had to initiate a new BAA. Uh, does that make sense? Is there any cost associated with it? No additional costs, no sir. What, what, what system does UAB use? What EHR system? Uh, Cerner. Sure. Primarily Cerner. We use Meditech? No, so we, <laughs> we did use Meditech. Uh, we're currently using uh, another system, Kirby, um, is the system that we use. But Meditech is a very, very old system, um, well before my time here when we were a hospital. So it just holds very old birth information that we have to keep um, for, for babies that we birth at the hospital many, many years ago that we just have to hold on to by law. Any other questions? Move one, two, three, second. Service Associates for the Bicadori 2 project. We had some additional funding uh, left, so that would allow us to do a small version of a storm shelter over in Bicadori. Number two is with 1815 Management Company. Again, another rental assistance agreement uh, in the amount of $5,280. Number three is the Environmental Review for ESG Emergency Solution Grant Administration. We are required to do an environmental assessment on all of our programs, and this particular item is exempt uh, from environmental review. Environmental review, emergency shelter assistance, uh, is categorically excluded, not subject to, uh, as a part of the env environmental review. Uh, the same uh, classifications for environmental review, uh, homeless management information system, categorically excluded, not subject to. Uh, categorically excluded, not subject to for homes uh, prevention assistance. The same for rapid rehousing assistance. Uh, the same for um, street outreach. Uh, environmental review home program administration is is uh, exempt. And uh, that's it. Doug, I have a question. <coughs> and I understand these are environmental reviews and yes, whatever that entails. <coughs> What's the difference between a, an exemption and an exclusion? It right. seems to me to be synonymous. Well, let me let me let me break it down like this. So, if we were, were doing a park or a storm shelter, right. we would have to do a, an environmental assessment to include a phase one to show that that project has no negative impact on the environment. Right. On these, where you're doing administration right. and things like this, there's different categories, and some, as far as like administration, they become exempt, and the other ones that I described the category. And that engineering service contract, 638? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For engineering? For design and inspection.
this is the report for District 1 Public Works Community Services and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. Uh, we have items 1, 2, and 3. And uh, is that you, Kay? Okay. Uh, Item number 1 is Accelerated Technology Software. Uh, this should be the last year we use them. Um, that's what they can reporting and so forth to ADM. Number two is the American Healthcare Resources for our to the operators. There are approximately five of them. Uh, generally, 40 hours per week. Some of them are actually part-time. Number three is industrial safety and training services. And that's for training for working in confined spaces, ditches, manholes, pump stations, so on and so forth. That's uh, eleven thousand per year. Yes. Four classes, twenty-five in each class, in one year. Is that uh, is that going to get everybody trained in that over three years? Yes. yes. So, I won't go with that training. <laughs> uh, and on the um, wastewater treatment plant operators, and most in the monthly report that we're still working on that. There's a slow process, but I think you'll see yeah. that improve. Uh, I just asked that before you left. We hope to use this uh, one more year, possibly two more, but that's our goal. We see all day that everybody's working hard to get to where we're feeding and growing our own operators. Obviously, that's one of our biggest goals we've got. Right. The ability of the uh, uh, operators, they put Perspective operator passes test is the, is the one of the primary restriction factors, right? And that's nationwide, that's not just the mm -hmm. That's right. Well, it, it, our HR department has worked with the environmental survey on the training, and they've done a great job uh, with the intern program and also uh, with the training of our existing staff to help them to pass that test. The passing rate on the test is. Uh, in the 20 percent range, um, and you have to be a certified four operator. You have to have um, you have to pass that data test. Commissioner, I might add, we're also launching an apprenticeship program, right. which we're very excited about. So thank you for reading that in the monthly report. So we'll be updating you on that. But we do have an apprenticeship program we're starting in environmental services. Right. <coughs> Move one, two, three. So, that has been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All right, under District 1, report and other business, uh, item 1, the resolution is on the town hall meeting. Wanted to make sure that all commissioners are aware we're not going to spend $10,000. It says up to $10,000, and the reason being is because I did want the commission uh, to be in a position where we're asking for favors, whether it's to lease the facility, or any type of equipment associated with putting on this event. Uh, in addition to that, uh, let me also make everyone aware that this is through our committee, so it's not intended at all to uh, promote any one commissioner, as it is uh, written in the resolution that it is the commission uh, that is putting on this event with the understanding that we will be uh, dealing with the public works and uh, uh, the town hall meeting. So if you have any questions, uh, please, let that be known at this point, but I just want to go ahead and make sure we address any concerns uh, that may have come as a result uh, of about uh, the amount of money and why we're doing that. Um, I also spoke with uh, our county <coughs> attorney. He knew from the start uh, the reason why we needed to allocate funds uh, or funding for uh, this event is to avoid any kind of uh, issues that would surround asking any other municipal government or anyone for assistance uh, to help put on this program. Also spoke to Mr. Henry uh, so that we are on one accord about those funds being available and for his usage. Does anyone have any questions at this time? I, I have a question about the sure. uh, understanding the process since uh, the original came across as a grant um, and the AO has very specific and defined terms on process that we have to do to make sure that it's been appropriate. But, um, how, would, how would this be 
what would the process be for this for it to be expended so it can be transparent to Absolutely. the commission and the budget? Well, it wasn't written as a grant before, but let me just say, after speaking with the county attorney, uh, how we perceive that this should move forward. Right now, your expense is only the lease of the building of stage, lighting, sound, uh, equipment, and probably a projector uh, with a screen. Uh, that being the case, all invoices would be made to the county commission, care of uh, commission district one, and then that would be forwarded on to the finance department uh, so that it can be done very smoothly and transparently. Uh, we didn't want to have a third party uh, organization uh, to handle this because if there was any cost involved or whatever, we wanted to eliminate that cost and just make it very plain and simple uh, because it doesn't require a lot to put it in a town hall meeting. And it cost, and let me also say this too, uh, for all commissioners of uh, uh, consumption, uh, this money will also cover if we had any publication I know that unlike where Commissioner Tyson and I come from, typically the city would print materials. Here we don't have a printing facility, uh, so therefore we would have to pay to have whatever printing uh, done and any publication. Uh, if we decide to use um, uh, Commissioner Stevens, good friend over there in the corner, Mr. Uh, Barnett, for any reason with Birmingham Times, uh, they don't give up their space for free. And we didn't want it for free. And that's why we wanted to make sure that we had enough money budgeted so that whatever means that we use to publicize this event, we can pay for it. Do you, um, do you see you in the manager's office or the new PIO position to help support? support uh, in, anything that is supportive, it's just the fact that I don't control what happened in the county manager's office. But certainly, I would welcome, uh, I, matter of fact, is she here? She's in doing the board inspection. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I'd love to work with it, uh, but I want to make sure that um, we don't put too much of an onus on you all's department to do it as much as we certainly want to make sure we work with the department. But you can't control someone else's right. staff. I, I guess the thing that we want to make sure that we speak with one voice, mm -hmm. and we, we, we need to work that mm -hmm. way. What we do, if this is going to be, uh, I guess the <clears throat> first thing would be, what, what is the purpose of the meeting? Sure. It's a town hall meeting. What is the purpose and the desired outcome? Sure. Well, first of all, we want to use it as an educational and informational component so that uh, we know that internally about the rates are going to be going up, and that was something that was already agreed upon. I perceive that many members of the public don't know why their sewer rate is steadily increasing, though we think they do. Uh, I know that from being out there winning votes to get me here today, and they don't know. Uh, the water portion of the bill is going up as well, and I think rather than us being on the defense, we should be on the offense. We should let the public know what has transpired with the bankruptcy, how we got to where we are today, and where we're going in the future. That's the purpose of uh, this town hall meeting. Uh, I, I don't perceive, and maybe something has occurred that I don't know, but uh, Commissioner Tyson and I were a part of a lawsuit uh, from the city dealing with this issue. Uh, and, and so I think it would be beneficial to all of us uh, to know, in this, in this uh, since we're speaking of transparency, how we inherited the problem. What are we doing about the problem? It's already been done, but we don't have to have a misquote when the folks who are on the platform are uh, all the folks who are involved here now. And as a matter of fact, that was going to be my next ask is for uh, staffing to make themselves available, Mr. Patel, uh, because uh, John Henry can speak to the finance of it and how our rates will go from year to year. And then we have uh, uh, our county attorney he can speak to the legality of where we are. Uh, and I know everybody said, well, we can't do anything about it. That's fine. Then let the county attorney say that and why. Yeah. Okay. I, and I guess one of Well, you'll be the hero. I'm not trying to throw you off the phone. But, I, but I'm just saying that, that if, if, if I am a senior citizen and I'm on a fixed income, 
and, and the rates are, are, are steadily going up, I would want to know what happened. How, how did we get here? And, and I didn't know my, my bill was going to go up again. And, and if so, how much? Because my check is not changing. The rate of what I'm paying for sewer and water is about to change. And so at least if, if we do that, I think it puts the county in a more, more trustworthy posture uh, where the public feels like they at least have some understanding and that we care for them to have and I, and I totally agree. But, uh, what I want to make sure that there was a point in time that you were adversary to the county's position. Mm -hmm. you know, completely adversary. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that if, if we're expending county dollars mm -hmm. to inform the public <coughs> that we're all on the same accord. And and you have a, a good understanding now that the rate increases <coughs> represent operation and maintenance, capital expenditures and debt service mm -hmm. and those increases are fixed for the next well for 2023 for the next 10 years mm -hmm. and when we need to make capital improvements we don't go to the bond market like <coughs> turn him <water> <coughs> and, and that's called a pay jump uh, all of ours is already built into those rate increases and if it, that's what we need to make all of our rate payers aware of and that the plan is in place and the plan is working, and that they, we, we can't foresee any um, de deviating from the plan or, or requiring them to have I've said that, I've said, I've said said that, so I've said that two dozen times, and I'll be happy to repeat it any time you get ready. Right. And Commissioner, this will go through the, any funds expended will need to go through the person for the county. Okay. I mean, we don't have anything to hide. So if there's a bill associated with whatever, we just make sure that uh, that's one thing Samitra is excellent at. She knows how to give me credit. Uh, but the main thing is making sure that we have staff available uh, to be able to talk about it. Let, let me also say this too, because I want to be very clear on the record. Uh, the reason why Commissioner Tyson and I were uh, adverse uh, to the bankruptcy is because it heavily impacted our districts uh, and, and, and there are majority of people who cannot pay for it. And so as city council members, which we were also appointees to the Birmingham Water Works Board, we did favor that position. And so I understand that we, we now represent the county and she understands that as well, but we also still represent the same constituents. And, and we want to make sure that as much as possible that lies within us, that it is communicated by this commission. We have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the public knows what you eloquently say. Like, for example, uh, I was speaking to someone. I had no idea that you and another commissioner had, had gone and spoken with the bondholders. Well, I would have loved to have heard that and known that from you. Those kind of things, I think, when the public hears it, they may interpret that a different way, even though you were there in your business. And so that's the reason why I'm saying, whatever it is, it's not gonna be a scripted town hall meeting, and let me say this, I've never had one of those. I've always believed that the truth stands for itself. But, but the best people to be able to explain whatever questions may come up is the best staff in the world that we already have. And Mr. Patelis will be there to help join along and, and say how we got to where we are as well. So I think you will be very confident, and I think that the general public will see us in a better light than what they've seen us in, in the past. That's right. And I would I, I say, absolutely, yes, ma'am, that you know the constituent base specific. Your voters cannot vote for me. You can't vote for me. The only people who can vote for me are the ones that put me in office in my district. I work for this county as a whole, as a Jefferson. But I still have responsibility. Now, I have people that I call me on a daily basis that I have to try to help get their water bill paid right. because their school bill is so high. So I cannot let Miss Smith at the age of 99 <coughs> let her water be cut off. Not this year, it will not happen. It will not happen this year. So I'm very concerned about the school bill. I'm not out 
trying to destroy the camera because if I do that, I'm destroying myself. So I'm not going to lie for the county, not nobody at this table. I'm not going to help them lie. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Because anything I do wrong, the only people, only person I pay for this is going to be me. And I'm not going to be out trying to down this, the, our county. Not my partner. Well, if I talk about you, you know I'm talking about myself. I'm sitting at this table with people. So all I want to, to know is, you know, she's doing that, and I, um, I will be there. I don't know what that is, but I will be there. But I, I just, I think that the public look at us in such a bad way, and since I've gotten on the uh, county commission, they're looking for answers. And I can only tell them what I know. And that's why it's the uh, evil with the sheriff uh, thing. It's, it's, there's things that I don't know. I'm willing to admit that I want to learn. I really do. I want to learn. It. And I've, I've called and asked both of y'all questions. And, I, and, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to learn. But I want to learn the right, the correct way. I know the attorney, he will tell you, I know he gets emails from me on a daily basis. Asking him questions. He probably sick of me, but I'm going to keep emailing him until <laughs> I can fully understand, you know, what's going on. Because when people ask me questions, I've got to go to someone to get an answer in order to give them a correct uh, uh, you know, answer. So if I don't know, I'm going to ask questions. But to make anyone look bad, just, that's not what I'm up here for. And I don't think no, the commission is scared. No, not, not completely. My, my reason for saying that was that we were we were on different sides and you were receiving information and you did not know our position and the reason we were doing what we were doing. Well the same information that I had then is the same information that I had now. And well, what, why has your position changed? It, it hadn't changed. Okay. It hadn't changed. I still feel like the citizens mm -hmm. should be having should uh, take this burden off. It's a burden upon the citizens in District 1 and 2 that is unbearable. That our sewer bill is getting cut all out because our water is getting cut off because of the sewer bill. I have over 1,500 people just in the Birmingham area don't have water because of the sewer bill. I still feel that in my heart. Do you know how I feel if someone is asking me how to get access to water and they stay in the city? as big as Birmingham, and as well as educated as Birmingham. I mean, do you know how that? I had to make a uh, list of services, services to help people in my district. I have became a social worker. That's not part of my job. But I did it because my people in my district and in Jefferson County need it. I help people on the south side. Over there by UAB, I help people. I help people all over Jefferson County, and I don't mind. I'm not complaining. I'm trying to inform you that people are suffering because of the sewer bill and because of the health care. It's not just that; it's because of health care too. That they can't afford their diabetes medicine. They cannot pay that eighty dollars for copay. I got a big problem with that that they can't see the doctor because they have a co-payment that's $80. I have had, had to ask a doctor, a particular doctor, to give one of the people I knew just was very sick some money to I could get up there to give her some money to see the doctor. And that bothers me. It really does because I, I, before I leave my house, I see every last one of them sisters. And then when I come home, I see them too. One of the things that's a very real problem that we're going to have to address. And uh, I have I've spoken with uh, Mr. Tellis and uh, I talked to the uh, county attorney, and we're going to have an executive session after our commission meeting on Thursday, which I want to remind everyone will be in festival. So uh, plan on a, an executive session. To discuss this, to discuss a, 
a retreat, uh, and I, I have updated uh, information that, that I will give to the new three, three new commissioners. That's uh, our clearance report that we had. So it's time we updated and, and, and look to see where we were and what we've been able to accomplish and our challenges that are still in front of us. So it's with a new commission, I think that's important. And we need to be looking at our schedules and thinking about a date to, to go off campus and to have that, that retreat type environment so we get to, so everyone will remain on the same page policies of the county forward. Um, Let me ask you something, Mr. President. <clears throat> I want to be clear too because uh, as Commissioner Tyson was speaking, um, <clears throat> the one thing that I, I think that we owe it to the folks that all of us have made at least some kind of commitment, I don't want to say promise, but a commitment to our constituents that there, there are certain things that when we were out here trying to get a vote, we said that they'd have a voice at the table because you all had a shared interest. What I, what I don't want to happen is that we have a strong arm approach to uh, this town hall meeting and any meeting as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think that's why the public has gotten to a point not only do they reject politics in this nation, but that, that's what made them reject us. I believe, unlike in Ammons District, that commissioner decided that he wouldn't run. The other two commissioners, whether some folk liked them, they got voted out. And they were voted out for a reason. And so I agree with Commissioner Tyson. I don't, I don't want our voices to be muffled, but just know that we're clearly aware of the county's position. Now, I'll be very candid with you. That's, that's a tight rope that you gotta walk because if your, your constituents don't agree with the county's position, I mean, are we supposed to just don't say anything? I don't think that that would be your position on that. You've been a teacher, even if the, even if the student did disagree, you still allowed them to speak. That's called meaningful dialogue. Meaningful dialogue. And, and that's meaningful what dialogue, we, as long as that goes to the bone, uh, county attorney lost. We'll look for you to give guidance to make sure that, that the county's position. You know, we, we cannot do a public venue change county policy or county or our position. That, that's been stated. Now, to have meaningful dialogue in a, in a public environment is one thing. Uh, but in order to, we cannot effectuate or attempt to effectuate any change in the county's position. Our, our county position is that it's, it, we've gone through bankruptcy, that we have a bankruptcy plan of adjustment, the plan of adjustment Revenues are, are within that parameter. Expenses are all within that parameter, and you know, if work, we don't foresee any change. And uh, that, I think that's our position. It is my understanding that this is an educational process to uh, put forward the position of the candidate. <coughs>
your children. Mm -hmm. And that led me to believe that you perhaps may not take if, if that was different from the county's position, perhaps you may assume the constituent's position against the county. So here's what I'm saying, and, and this is for uh, clarification, because I always tell folks that I'm very articulate and I, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. I'm here strictly to, to speak on behalf of my constituents. I make no bones about it. In this setting, I'm not the star of the show. The folk, as in John Henry and your county attorney, our, these county. Are, our county attorney, these are the folk <coughs> who are speaking on behalf of the county. I'm not speaking on behalf of the county. But I do know that I'm going to help to publicize to interested individuals to attend this meeting so that they can hear the county's narrative as to why we're having this town hall meeting, okay? Uh, because I was telling Commissioner Ammons this morning, the beauty in your judgment is the fact that you thought I'd be good for this committee. And so I think it's only healthy that if we're gonna have a committee that is functional and effective. And, and in a case where this, to me, has been such a blind, uh, a, a, a sock in the eye, for lack of better words, uh, to the county, it would only behoove us to have this kind of conversation. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember I was accused of when I was running of giving out misinformation in terms of the interest rate. And I say, hey, well, you know, I called to the county, I couldn't get ABC answer, so all I could do was go by uh, what the attorney that Commissioner Tyson and some of the other council members over there in the city were exposed to. I mean, that's just, that's just it. So if the county doesn't tell its own story and, 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 and have its own information out there, then we do our constituents a disservice. Now, if someone asks me outside of this town hall meeting, well, what is my position? I'm always be in the position that benefits the people because I'm, I'm with Tyson. Um, I share in the fact of when you're trying to help residents um, with this situation, unless you're just a heartless individual, there's no way you can turn uh, a blind eye. There's no way. Because you're talking about what is already in data form. Um, it's proven that these two districts financially are not whole. They're poor. So that's not just something we say. That's something that's well documented. And most of the indigent folk uh, that we talk about, even as it relates to Cooper Green, they're coming out of districts one, two, and some of them coming out of three. But the good number of them, four and four, don't want to discriminate. But I'm just talking about when you when you speak of it, I'm talking about where there's an overwhelming number. Then it's documented that you you're dealing with poor people. And I'll be honest <coughs> with you. The one thing I don't want to have happen, Mr. President, is that it it be a situation where we know that the water has gone up. I didn't know, actually, until uh, you shared it with me. I, I didn't even know they had taken a vote a couple of months ago. I don't even think the Birmingham Water Works has even told the ratepayers that that portion of the water is going up. So I'd rather for us to put, put it out there first and give the accurate information first <coughs> than for the people to have to come down here and, and maybe they're fussing at the wrong folks. And, and then this will also give us an opportunity to talk about how the county wants to put uh, something in place. Uh, uh, I've talked to the county attorney about it, I knew you were in favor of it, of trying to put some kind of payment assistance fund in place so that folk who need our kind of assistance to help pay to keep their work on, we can be able to help. And I think, Mr. President, that, 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 that lends itself for all of us to, to say that, you know, we're showing that we care as opposed to just saying that. Right, and that, and that form of assistance is going to be part of the HDO program. Mm -hmm. That the, the county does not have any, and I'll, I'll just refer to the county term, but the, the county does not, cannot uh, discriminate mm -hmm. against ratepayers in the form of a payment assistance. So we can allow Waterworks for someone else, another entity, United Way, someone like that. They can do that. We need to talk about it. 
But the county itself does not have a provision that, that, that we can do that because of the, the indenture. Yeah. Uh, but so, we can fund it. And, and that's what the public doesn't know, is and, that we have the ability to and, at least support it on some level. And I'm not so sure that the, uh, the public, the general public knows the new funding agreement from the waterworks. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that we can address. Or, uh, Absolutely. You, can, you can address it at the, at the appropriate time. Oh, uh, she, she has a good Go ahead. Yes, sir. Just one, because I think we, we, we talked about this a lot. I just got a couple points. No one, if there's going to be a presentation, is that you shared with the commission? You know, it's going to be a PowerPoint or whatever, the print materials, just so we're all on the same page. Yeah, because I would want all the commissions to be present. That, so before we do it, anything publicly, uh, then you all want a, uh, a copy of the presentation. Commissioner has a great, right. great point. We all need we all need to be on the same page, mm -hmm. so we're all we all sing off the same song. It's only one truth. <clears throat> well, um, and then you you said hey you don't want to you don't want to spend ten thousand um, even though that's the max. Uh, just encourage you to be very. Uh, it's coming out of our discretionary. I, I, I agree. I agree, but it doesn't take you know that much money. You can do it for nothing. You can do it for something. So, um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to say we can do it for free. You can go to church. They can do it. I understand you want to do it in a in a place that that um, is comfortable for everybody to come. Probably needs to be a bigger facility because we probably have a lot of people show up. I get that. I'm just asking, you know, to be as economical as possible. But why would we put a burden on the church when what is free to us is not free to them? I, I think that that would be. I'm, I'm just asking you to be you know, Well, it's coming um, out of our funds. That's the reason why I was willing to, to pay for it, so that that wouldn't I become an issue. Right. Uh, I get, I get. If the war be if the church is high enough, we're going to make the light bill go up by having to meet them. Thank you. Um, and so, um, uh, all that being said, that, that being shared, I would move the item. Thank you, sir. It's been moved, and do we have a second? Exactly. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Thank you, ma'am and sir. Have you seen the Birmingham Waterworks new commercial? No, I haven't. They talk about yes. the quality of the water, which mm -hmm. is nice. We're working hard. Yeah, so they charge the water. Money for it. And then the end of the commercial, the rate's going up 3.9%. <laughs> wow. Well done. Oh, well, I get it. All right, so on number two. And we need to explain that, ain't it? Well, that's the reason why I'm saying, why would you not want to have something that you don't have your own voice? Why would we let the waterworks speak for us? I think we're more than capable in that right turn. Uh, yes, our community, <laughs> item number two is community grant. Uh, this is about the MLK breakfast. Let me just say this because I understand that they, uh, there have been some questions surrounding uh, is this going to be used for this year? Why are you doing it now? Well, it's nothing unprecedented. Uh, because the previous commission, based upon what I found out, Commissioner Tyson learned, uh, is that they appropriated for 19 back in 2018. Uh, the organizer of the event, uh, which I will say was well attended on yesterday, Commissioner Tyson and I represented the commission, I believe, uh, very good. And, uh, and it was well attended. I think it was sold out. Now, that being the case. I move. You move it? Okay. Anything else? And, and, and guess what? And I'm looking forward to Mr. President. I understand that Commissioner Tyson has asked you to have a specific role in, in assisting them, and uh, I think it's good. Yes, sir. So it's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Okay. It's, uh, that's all we have for District 1 reports. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Don't forget, everyone, the commission meeting is where? That's right. Right. The best thing is, don't have anything on the agenda and your department can't have a picture. Uh, you have your left hand? Yes, good. I don't think it's good. I don't